The actual decomposition, well, it's a bit like last time. I'll actually show you this and then I'll show you the overview slide again. I am just quantifying now how large are the different variabilities, right? First of all, there is a total variability. The total variability, I take each observation, compare it with the overall mean, square it, and add them all up, right? As if I was going to compute the variance on everything. I just don't divide by anything. I just do the sum of squares. That's the total variability. Actually, variability is a uh, synonym for information, right? If there is a large variability in my data, there is potentially a large variation, a large, uh, sorry, information, right? If everything was on the average, if all numbers had the same value on the average, how much information would there be for me in that? Rien de rien. However, if there is a value variability, there is information. What is that information telling me? Well, first of all, I copy my computation from last time. Please remember that now I'm going to run back. I could have copied it in, but I didn't do it. I just go back to this a couple of times. What I first did was to take each individual observation and compare it with the overall mean. And then I used all 24 in this case, right? Now I'm going to measure how different are the three TV sets. And please remember that if I just for a second ignore the person, the, the other way of the table, right? I could see this as a one-way table, just for a second, right? Ignore that I, I know that it's the same person. I could just see the table as three rows, three columns, sorry, right, first. Then it's a table, data table like the ones that we looked at last week, right? If I just for a second ignore the rows. So I just copy my treatment sum of squares computation from last week. That is the way to measure how different are the three TV means from each other. I run back to the slide that we are looking at. This one. This is a copy of my computation from last week, where I take the three means and measure how different are they by computing the variance of the three means, basically. Or computing the square of the three alphas, right? If the three means were the same, five, 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 the alphas would be zero, zero, zero. And this measure of how different are the three means would be zero, right? The more different the means, the three means are, the larger this SS treatment. It measures how different are the three alphas, right? Now I can repeat this. And now I jump back to my table. Now I could repeat this on the other way of the table, right? I could also see the table as a one-way table, but <laughs> in the other way, right? Column row-wise, I have eight means, and I could measure how different are these eight means by my um, SS thing from one way and over. So it's kind of looking at one way first, <coughs> one way again. <laughs> so it's just that's just a computational <coughs> comment to say that the comp that the computations I do is two times one-way computations, one way on the one way and one way on the other way. Whoa. Um, and I measure how different are the blocks now from each other by the same kind of uh, sum of squares. Finally, at the end, I can take each observation and compare each observation with, let's also say minus alpha i hat plus beta j hat plus mu hat. That's what I subtract, just to take the minus outside the parenthesis. 
What is mu hat plus alpha i hat plus beta j hat? That is what we expect of an observation if it matches exactly with the average person and the average product, average TV set, right? So I combine, that is what is, that is actually what the model predicts this observation to be. However, each person do not give exactly that number each time. There is a difference between what the model actually expects of an observation and what is actually happening. And this difference we call the residual. You have seen such a thought before in regression type analysis on last time. So it's the same thinking, the same way of approaching things. That there is a model average, and then what the difference to the model average is called the residual, and we measure the size of that by sum of squares, SSE, error sum of squares, residual sum of squares. It's exactly the same line of thinking as in regression models. So, and I'll jump back to this slide where I claim to you that those four, I gave you four different sums of squares, the total sum of squares, treatment sum of squares, computing the size of the means, block sum of squares, computing the size of the means, and then this residual sum of squares. Actually, if I were to do it by hand, I do, didn't have to compute all four, because if I computed three of them, I would have the fourth, because I have this relation. Actually, funny enough, but it happens, that the total sum of squares is exactly the sum of these three sources of variability. Part of it is due to TVs being different, part of it is due to persons being different, and part of it is due to residual variability. And those three things together gives us the total variability. In a way, we don't need the total variability, we need the other three to make uh, statistics, as it will show. So, we call it analysis of variance because of this way of comparing the means by computing certain variabilities of the means. That's our measure of mean difference. That is a variability of means. We need to do have such a measurement of treatment differences when we have more than two means because otherwise it's not easy to measure how different more than two means are from each other. Good. I think we'll do the next thing also because we're almost there and it's basically recapping what I taught you last time.